We've spoken a little bit about what peace is, inner peace, but how do you accomplish it? How do you get there? I don't know. <laughs> Just kidding, of course I know. Inner peace means that you start sorting through the discomforts of your own mind. It means that you become aware of negative thinking patterns and you challenge and you change them. It also means soothing your body. Actually bringing yourself to a place of homeostasis, a place of peace, a place of calm, a place of relaxation, so you can face whatever is ahead of you. And it means being in touch with something greater than yourself, something that you can rely on, something that you can anchor to. Let's start with the mental aspect of it. Uh, for me personally, I became aware, especially through the course of my marriage, of a whole host of negative beliefs that I had about myself that I had accrued through years of living. As a child getting bullied mercilessly in elementary school and wanting to be whoever people wanted me to be so that they would accept me. I was willing to change who I was to fit in uh, because I thought that who I was was unacceptable, was unlovable. Getting to a better place in middle school and high school, having my heart broken in high school, and then having my heart broken in college, uh, before Alicia, I had six girlfriends and the first five of them broke up with me, broke my heart. And that established in my mind a pattern that became a fact. And that fact was I wasn't lovable once you really got to know me. That I was destined to be left. That I was destined to be hurt. And that belief fed into a lot of anxious, insecure, clingy behaviors in my dating life and in my social life uh, with friends and with family members, I would try too hard. I would try too hard instead of just being because I figured that just being wasn't going to be enough. And I would push people away by clinging to them too tight. That's what that looked like for me. And that negative belief also showed up in my marriage and it showed up in minimizing and justifying and blame shifting and even lying and concealing the truth of things out of fear of rejection, out of this deep-seated belief that I was not truly lovable and that I was destined to be rejected and left. And I didn't have peace. So much of what I did was what Dr. Greg Bear in his book Real Love talks about, getting and protecting behaviors. Protecting behaviors, like protecting myself from being hurt. So that's projecting, that's pretending, that's lying, that's blame shifting. Or getting behaviors where I would do things specifically with the intent of receiving love and affection. And if I didn't get the love and affection that I hoped for, that I would become angry or hurt or dejected and bitter. What I didn't have in my life was peace. Alicia helped me to see, uh, do some self work what we would call in my field, cognitive behavioral therapy, cognitive therapy, addressing your thinking patterns, addressing that these beliefs that I had about myself were not based in fact, they were based in perception. And that, you know, I do this with people, it's called narrative therapy, the facts of your story don't change, but you decide what the facts mean. And you can choose a meaning that is empowering. For me, I got dumped five times in a row. Those are facts. The meaning that I had given was that I was unlovable, but what if I chose the meaning that I wasn't ready yet to love someone unconditionally? Or the meaning was I was so desperate and I was so insecure that I drove people away who otherwise might have stayed. But that if I could learn and grow through that, that I could be a person of confidence and a person of peace and a person who loves and is worthy of love and always was worthy of love. So how I challenged those cognitions was through EFT tapping, which is something that we at Mended Light can teach you to do, but it's repeating to myself while tapping at certain points, I release the belief that I am unlovable. I release the belief that I am unworthy, right? I am lovable. I am worthy. I am good enough. And I'm talking talk myself through these things and it's not lying to yourself and it's not, you know, positive psychology BS. What it is, is I can create my reality. We all can. 
the whole little engine that could, I think I can, I think I can, I think I can. That believing that you can do something, believing that you can be something. The thought my mom used to say is the father of the deed, right? That you have to think something first, create it in your mind before you create it in reality. And by changing how I think about myself and think about the world around me and my relationship to the world around me and the people around me, I would change the behavior and create that new reality. And learning to embrace myself with all of my imperfections, learning to be happy with who I am, led to greater peace for me. So inner peace comes through challenging negative thinking patterns. That's more long-term. What about in the moment? In the moment when you're panicked or anxious or stressed? We talked in the, in the learn about video about lack of peace showing up as tension in the body, a type of tension that can lead to a weakened immune system, uh, as well as inability to focus and inability to think clearly. How do you achieve peace physically? You relax the body. You breathe slow and deep. I talked in that last video about box breathing, right? In, hold, out. Hold, in, hold, out, hold. That doing that sort of thing uh, slows down the heart rate, increases blood flow and oxygen to the brain, relaxes the muscles, helps you to be calm and centered and to be able to think clearly. It's one of the reasons why we meditate, it's one of the reasons why we do yoga, listen to music, watch movies, exercise, it helps us to focus in on one thing and that helps us to reset our brains and reset our bodies and find peace. Lastly, we talked about spirituality, being connected to something greater than yourself. I mentioned that for some people that's God, for others that's nature, for others it's the world, their community, their family, and for still others, the thing that is greater than themselves that they are connected to is their higher self. Matthew McConaughey was asked who his hero was and he says, me, five years from now. <laughs> that who he's trying to become is the person that he looks up to and that the person that he checks in with. Your spirituality is your center. Your spirituality is your values, is what you believe. It's what, uh, what shapes your morality. I found that acting ethically, acting morally, acting in alignment with my values brings me peace. And that when I act out of alignment with those values and those beliefs that I experience uh, an unpleasant cognitive dissonance. And so spiritually, you find peace by figuring out who you are. And you say, well, I don't know who I am. Okay, start with who you're not. What do you not stand for? What do you oppose? That will help you to know what you are for. Get a piece of paper and write, write a list with two columns, what I am against, what I'm for, right? Or who I am not and who I am. Figure out what values you want to live in alignment with. And when people say, I don't know who I am, the beautiful thing is you are whoever you decide to be. You create that, you choose that. Choosing the person that is gonna bring you joy and peace, that's how you get there. So that's my little ditty on how to find peace. I uh, hope that this has been helpful for you and that you will trust us on the rest of your journey towards positive emotions, through unpleasant emotions, and learning more about yourself.